It was one of the most important steps in the study of human origins, a discovery that has forced us to rethink where we came from and how deep into the past we can truly reach. For decades, archaeologists have uncovered scattered fragments of our ancient ancestors, bones weathered by time, tools left in caves, traces of homes where people once lived. But there was always a limit. Beyond a certain point, DNA, the fragile code of life, simply disintegrated. The dream of recovering a genetic voice from humanity's earliest chapters seemed impossible. And yet, against all odds, that dream has now been realized. In Central Europe, in the quiet landscapes of what is today Czechia and Germany, scientists extracted DNA from the skeletal remains of people who lived more than 45,000 years ago. The results shocked even the most cautious researchers. These sequences are the oldest human genomes ever decoded. Not myths, not reconstructions. But the real biological signatures of men and women who walked the earth at the very dawn of our species in Europe. For generations, one haunting question lingered. Who were the first humans to set foot on this continent? What happened to them? Did they vanish, replaced by later waves, or do their echoes still live on inside us? Until now, the answers remained uncertain. The story does not begin with written history. It begins with bones. In 1950, excavators at a site called Zlati Kun in Chechia uncovered the skull of a young woman. It was damaged, fractured in places, but remarkably intact. For decades, it sat in collections, studied for its shape, but silent about its deeper secrets. At the time, no one could imagine that hidden inside those fossilized remains were fragments of DNA, preserved against time's relentless decay. Then, in 2002, another set of bones was unearthed, this time in a cave near Ust Ishim, Siberia. And a few years later, Jawbones and teeth surfaced from a site in Germany known as Bacho Kiro. Together, these discoveries provided the raw material for a new kind of science, paleogenomics, the sequencing of DNA from ancient humans. But there was a catch. DNA this old is not like the clean, unbroken strands you might find in a modern lab sample. It's shattered, fragmented into tiny chemical scraps riddled with contamination from soil, microbes, and centuries of decay. To read it, scientists had to reinvent entirely new methods, painstaking techniques that could piece together a genome one microscopic fragment at a time. At first, progress was slow. For years, researchers managed only small genetic glimpses, a fragment here, a few markers there, enough to hint at connections, but not enough to tell the full story. Many doubted it would ever be possible to recover complete genomes from remains so ancient. And then, everything changed. Teams at the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology in Leipzig, Germany, and their partners across Europe, pushed the technology further than anyone believed possible. They drilled carefully into teeth, the ideal time capsules, sealed against the elements, and extracted powder from the dense inner layers. Within that powder were traces of DNA, sealed in place since the Ice Age. What they found stunned them. From those ancient molecules, scientists reconstructed entire genomes. Not partial sequences, not fragments. Full, readable genetic blueprints of people who had lived 45,000 years ago some of the very first modern humans to spread into Europe after leaving Africa. And their DNA revealed something breathtaking. When compared to the genomes of present-day humans, these ancient individuals carried long, unbroken stretches of Neanderthal DNA. Far more than we carry today, that meant they lived at a time not long after modern humans and Neanderthals had interbred. The signatures were fresh, the traces still bold in their genetic code. It was powerful evidence, proof that these early pioneers were among the first generations after the Great Encounter, 
when two species of human met, mingled, and left behind a lasting trace. But the surprises didn't end there. The DNA also showed that these people were not direct ancestors of today's Europeans. Their genetic line vanished. They belonged to an early wave of migration that entered Europe and then disappeared, replaced by later groups. In other words, they were pioneers who opened the path, but whose descendants left no lasting mark. That realization shocked scientists. For years, many assumed the first humans to arrive in Europe gave rise to later populations, but the genomes told a different story, a forgotten people who survived for a time, then vanished. And yet, their DNA gave us a window into one of the most crucial moments in human history. Think about it. You are looking not at myth, not at speculation, but at the actual code of life from individuals who lived tens of thousands of years ago. You can see the traces of encounters, the footprints of migration, the scars of extinction, all written into their very cells. It's a story of survival, but also of loss. Because these genomes revealed something else, they showed us just how fragile our species once was. These early groups lived on the edge, small bands scattered across vast Ice Age landscapes, facing cold winters, predators, and competition from Neanderthals. Their survival was never guaranteed. Every step forward was a gamble against extinction, and yet they carried the torch. The data also hinted at something profound about time. The Neanderthal segments in their DNA were much longer than those in ours. That length is like a clock, telling scientists how many generations had passed since interbreeding occurred. By measuring the size of those fragments, researchers could estimate that these individuals lived just a few hundred generations after modern humans and Neanderthals first intermingled. That means we are looking almost directly at the aftermath of that encounter. Not a distant echo, but the first ripples of a genetic event that would shape humanity forever. And still, there was one more revelation. These genomes suggested that the story of humanity in Europe was not a single migration, but many. Waves of people entered, some vanished, others endured. The ones from Zlaté Kun and Bacho Kiro did not survive in us. But later groups did. Our genetic heritage is not a straight line. It's a braided river, with streams joining and splitting, some drying out, others carrying on. And that raised a haunting question. How many entire peoples, entire stories, have been lost to time?